This is the rash that you get when you soak with peroxide if you have horse hair nematomorpha. Um, I was diagnosed with human case of horse hair nematomorpha and before I knew what I was diagnosed with um, I felt inspired to spray my hands with hydrogen peroxide every few minutes until they air dried and then um, up came after a while up came these little parasites and you can see that some are long and squiggly and some are just dots and the interesting thing is that this rash looks like just dry skin down here you can see it's just kind of irritated and and red looking but it's not um, really parasite looking but then as I soak it and it gets into the peroxide it gets red and then after a while it's and they're already starting to go away from if I'd have to get them wet again um, but they get up come these parasites and they're um, at all different stages in the neem and the uh, morph let's see the second stage when they're in the lymphatic the first stage they are in the lungs and then they crawl up the back of your throat and you cough uh, kind of a hacking dry cough every once in a while as they irritate your throat and then the second stage they're in your lymphatic for about a week just over a week and then they go into a worm stage in your gut when they get too big for your lymphatic so you can see there's all different sizes and shapes um, they, some of them, when you soak in peroxide, this is, I've had paper towel kind of over it for about 40 minutes now, and then I took it off for a little while and let it air dry. It, they seem to pop up more when you air dry them. Um, they, I picked it, this, the one here and uh, another one on my finger, but, um, if I continued, I don't know if you, you can see that very well, but they're all right there. If I soaked my hand, pulled it out, soaked my hand. You can see though enough that you can see they're coming up there. But if I soaked them and, and air dried it another maybe five times, I would my whole hand would be covered with these these white dots. But you can see it's better in the shade actually of the camera. And then you dip it, so you soak it at first for about a half an hour, 40 minutes. And then you take it out and air dry it, and then you dip it and let it air dry, then you dip it, let it air dry, dip it, let it air dry, and you continue doing that um, for even up to two hours, and usually more and more. And not everybody has them on their hands. I, I have a dry rash on my hands, um, so they show up more, but um, they are typically wherever you have a rash. So if you're gardening and you're getting it out of the soil, a lot of people have it on the back of their ankles um, and on their calves, the uh, back of their their um, legs on their calves. And it's it, anything that has to do with water or oils or anything that keeps it wet makes it more irritated. And that's why it's so hard to get rid of this because if you bathe, or like me, I wash my hands a lot because I'm doing projects like this week. I um, used a sponge, that's why it's so irritated right now, is I used a sponge spackling and I was tiling. So rinsing that sponge, doing the grouting, um, my hand and arm were irritated from all the water because they come to the surface because they are a water parasite. Horse hernia metamorpha um, worms cause their uh, host to uh, commit suicide in the water and then lay their eggs in the water. So they like water in the shower. Um, you might have white shooting stars in the shower. Um, that's one of the signs or if you wash your hands a lot you might see some white dots but most of the time they're just it's just a rash and it's kind of irritating. You might feel creepy crawlies under your skin. Um, I did feel some on the back of my, let's see where was it today? I think it was on the back of my hand. I don't feel that too often where I can feel them under the skin, but oh no, it was it was here. It was about right there today in my skin. And then there is a sore right there. You can see the bigger sore. Um, the oftentimes if you have this parasite, um, they will lay there. They will um, come out of the skin when they're in a larger form and lay their eggs once they're poking out of the skin and then they'll go back in the skin. So at night I'll feel like a piercing on the back of my 
knees in the soft of the knees or on the for my forearms. And I have a rash on the other forearm, um, or an irritation, I think it would be right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, kind of like a dark spot. And it's irritated all the time. It's always, always, always itchy. And that is, um, they, and I have another friend that has uh, all the symptoms of this and she has that little bump where it comes out too and how I know that is I would wake up all the time with these pinching piercing pains um, in the night but I kind of was so tired I just would feel the pinch and then I'd go back to sleep and then um, I was starting to have the rash down on my arm here and um, I kept having these these bumps and these sores where I kind of itchy um, and they would go away after a while, but there'd always kind of be a bump there. And then I, um, I put some of this yeast cream on, because if you use peroxide too much, it can kill the normal sores, so I'll just use some kind of an anti-yeast cream or an anti-foot foot and, um, oh gosh, what is it called? Uh, athlete's foot cream, any kind of anti-yeast cream. And then I put diatomaceous earth. This is, I just poured into this because I buy it by the bulk bag. But diatomaceous earth, um, let me show you, it's just like a, it just looks like talcum powder. And it, it, um, so I put the cream on to hold the powder on and then I'll rub my hands with the powder and I rub it down my arm like that because I have the rash on my arms. And in the morning, so what diatomaceous earth does is it will, um, will cut open the size of insects and paras uh, parasites. So you can take it internally and it will kill the parasites in your gut, but these parasites obviously are not in the gut and I can't really get the diatomaceous earth in my lymphatic. So um, I just put it on the surface over this at night, but to keep it, you know, sloughs off the powder. And so I use the yeast cream and then I put the powder on it. So um, that night I, I had the powder on it and the yeast cream. And when I woke up in the morning, there was a piece of maybe a quarter inch of a worm hanging out of my arm. It, it was stuck out of my arm and it was all shriveled up and dry. And I have a picture of that on my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com. And if you type in horsehair nematomorpha or if you type in parasite diagnosis, um, parasite arm, any of those will bring up that post. So now you can see that the white dots are fading. So they are dead underneath the skin, most of them. Some of them might still be alive. And the only reason I know that is because if I try and pick them out, you can see I picked one out right there. A couple of them actually, they, if you um, pinch them, they will kind of pop like a, a pimple kind of, but like an actual worm will come out. Let me see if I can, oh, I don't know. Um, I think I've shown that on one of my other videos, but if you just take a pen and you pop one of those, bigger white things or see that curly cue one there you just can dig them out and they will actually you can see them and I put them on tape and I sent them up for a diagnosis but they couldn't figure out what they were they just look like black thread is what they look like when you look under a loop or a microscope they just look like a black teeny black thread and that's why we thought it was threadworm at first but those little threads turn into big worms so if you check out some of my other blogs you'll see how this um, it's all, uh, well, actually, go to my blog and type in that diagnosis, and you'll see a picture of the 8 inch worm that came out of me and um, how I got it diagnosed because it's not a human parasite, it's very difficult to diagnose. But um, I think that this might be what people often get diagnosed with in Morgellons because I can feel it under the skin sometimes. Um, and, and somebody would say that that is um, a peroxide burn, but no, that is what a peroxide burn looks like, where it turns the whole skin white and it's kind of chalky. Oh no, that's not burn, what is that? That's a paper towel. Sorry, but that's what it more of a, it looks like those right there. That's kind of more of what a, a hydrogen peroxide burn is, it's just kind of white and chalky. Um, right, right, the tips, if you can see, I don't know, the lighting's kind of bad in here, but those white kind of chalky tips, that's more of what a peroxide burn looks like. That, let's see, they're going away, they're almost gone now. If I spray it with peroxide, they come right back up and maybe I'll just drizzle some over there so you can see that happen. Um, but that, um, peroxide will bring those up and it, it 
will do this anywhere on the body where you put peroxide for a long time if you have this parasite, but you don't want to draw them to that area or do this if you, I mean, it's painful. Um, la last time I did this, I didn't videotape it, I should have, because my whole entire arm was white, but if you um, look on my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com, and type in arm parasite, you will see pictures of my entire arm is just white like this all the way down, and it's very, very bad, and I didn't soak my hand at the same time, and that caused a problem because all of the parasites then rushed into my hands and went to my fingertips, and there was nowhere else for them to go, and then, then see that white? Um, the white dots on my fingernails, it felt like, and these are called a Gordian worm because they cluster when they get together, they like a knot, and you can see those white dots on my fingernails, so that was the last time I soaked my hands. All the parasites then rushed to my fingers, and it felt like there was a drill bit drilling into my fingertips because the parasites had nowhere else to go and they were kind of clustering in my fingers doing their little Gordian knot thing, and that caused those white dots on my fingers fingernails. They're all about the same place. And then I have some up here where I did something similar. I soaked them for a lot right around the same time and that pain helped it happen in the fingertips as well um, on those um, when the higher white dots. So when there's a heavy load of this parasite um, and it is painful, it's extremely painful, and there's another girl that I met that has this just as bad as I do. She's got a really bad infection. She's had it for years from a cat bite. Um, and I think this comes from cats. Look at my other videos to see that, but I just am going to pour on, let's see if there's enough in here to do that. Let me grab some more outside and pour some on there. And see, you can see them come back up. It's really white. All right, I'm gonna the camera. Hopefully you can see it. I don't know if I can do both. <laughs> Okay, so I'm squirting peroxide over the dry where the white's no longer. Make sure it's all wet. Okay, so as I talk, you should, well, let it air dry, you should see the parasites come back up. So if you're going to go to the doctor and you, you do this soak and you see the parasites come up, they're dead. A lot of them are dead under there, and so they will cause your hands to swell or wherever you do your feet, if you have it on your feet, and then um, because they're dying and the lymph has to take them out, and then, um, but they're there for about 24 hours um, right under the skin. So you saw they were disappearing, and if you go to the doctor and you want them to be diagnosed, you soak your hand the night before and have them all come to the surface, and then when you go to the doctor, just take a little spray bottle and spray the parasites with peroxide, and they'll pop up, and so the doctor can see them more clearly. And you can see they're now white again, and they're coming to the surface. More will come, and if you do this over and over and over, more will come, more will come, more will come, more will come, if you have a heavy load. So, um, and then check out my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com, for the symptoms. You can just type in parasite symptoms. Um, it can be confused for threadworm. It can be confused with um, hookworm. It can be confused with morgellons. And also, um, the symptoms are very similar of the threadworm and hookworm and some of morgellons. So, just... Um, just type in symptoms parasite and up will come the symptoms and you can check and see if you have any of them but it's you can see there and I can feel them popping up to the surface and new ones are popping up all the time and if if you do this it they'll keep coming up and keep coming up and keep coming up so hopefully that's been helpful um, there's a video on how to get diagnosed with this it's very difficult to get this diagnosed because it is not normally a human parasite so check out my video and how to do that um, and my blog. You can say, you know, type in official diagnosis um, and up will come a video about how to get the worms out and get them diagnosed. So hopefully that was helpful and hopefully we can get enough people diagnosed that the CDC will look at it and uh, I hope you don't have it actually. Good luck.